Recently, I've been having some issues with Windows. Whenever I open the calculator, for some reason it becomes unresponsive and so does literally everything else. I can click on the taskbar or alt tap to switch between programs and this buggy state persists for at least a few minutes which is why I've been using Google search results as my calculator for the past 6 months. I also do a lot of web development for which I occasionally need to use VSL for which is basically like running Linux command line in Windows but for whatever reason it recently just stopped working and so did the new Windows terminal. Probably all I have to do is just install them, however, you have to do that through the Microsoft Store, and the issue is that the install button literally doesn't work for me, and I've always had issues with the Microsoft Store. The first issue I had with it was its existence, which is why in something like 2015, I actually uninstalled the Microsoft Store, and suddenly came out that many of the Windows apps didn't even start anymore, because apparently, to open calculator.exe, you need the Microsoft Store. Also, every day when I'm typing, Windows keeps adding random languages to my list of keyboard layouts, which is a problem I've had for years on every single Windows install on every system and it's not fixable because it's either a bug or some feature that you can't turn off. Another issue I've been having for a long time now is that the Spotify client on my Windows bugs out every time I start my computer and I have to close it from the task manager to get it working. And there are other small annoying issues here and there as well, but long story short, to fix all of them in one clean swoop, I should probably just reinstall Windows itself. But because I do a lot of multimedia and programming work, I'd have to reinstall, reconfigure and re crack all of the applications and settings I have and I really don't want to do that. Also, this may seem completely unrelated, but recently I went to a grocery store where I wanted to use the self-checkout, but for that I had to make an account using my government issued ID card and I also had to accept their data collection policy, which I of course unfortunately did, because nowadays it's normalized to the extent that even ovens require you to accept their terms of service, so every time I do reinstall Windows, suddenly finding 3 extra trackers I have to turn off is pretty annoying. And what what the fuck is this shit? And why do I have to make a Microsoft account just to install an operating system? And why do I have to log in to clear my local browser history on Edge? And now you're telling me I can't even play Minecraft without a Microsoft account? Absolutely disgusting, unbelievable actually. Not too long ago, I also made a video about moving on from Sony Vegas 13 and finding some new video editing software to make my videos with. I decided to try out DaVinci Resolve because Adobe is basically the Duolingo of subscription-based software and I heard DaVinci Resolve is just as capable but is free with a single time payment premium version as well. And after spending a lot of time on learning Resolve, I ended up making the first minute of the part 1 of my store renovation series entirely in Resolve but I ran into some issues and ended up using Adobe Premiere for the rest of the video instead. And while I was actually pretty happy with my cracked copy of Premiere Pro and After Effects, I for some reason still wasn't satisfied. Even if I am able to use Adobe software for free by going through the really annoying process of pirating them, if I decide to settle on Adobe, I'll still increase my dependence on them and one day I might still need to spend thousands of dollars on their subscription just to make videos. And it would also mean that I'd most likely be stuck on Windows forever and I wasn't too happy with that which is why I tried DaVinci Resolve again and I ended up making the second renovation episode and so far this video entirely within Resolve. Solve, and I gotta say, I'm actually quite enjoying the experience to some extent even more than I enjoyed using Adobe and the good thing about DaVinci Resolve is that it's not only available on Windows and Mac OS but also on Linux. So while I could just reinstall Windows and get on with my life, I kinda don't wanna do that because the annoying experiences I recently had with everything forcing you to use an account, how everything is mining data and how certain tools I depend on have such a strong monopoly that once you're too deep into their ecosystem, they can just do pretty much whatever they want because you have no choice but to keep on using them. This is also why I'm not too big of a fan of how pretty much everything is moving away from ownership and shifting towards subscription-based services, all of which combined is why I recently really started appreciating free and open source software so much more than I used to. So instead of reinstalling Windows, I've recently been kind of wanting to try out Linux. I've actually already used Linux for development before, but I've never really daily drove it because at the time it didn't have the best software compatibility, especially when it came to gaming and video editing. But thanks to the Vinky Resolve being a proper professional video editing program that's compatible with Linux and the fact that gaming on Linux is also becoming better and better due to things such as Valve's Proton, I'm imagining that I might just be able to daily drive Linux without even needing to dual boot Windows. But I'm still not really too sure about that yet and that's exactly why I'm going to lock myself to Linux for at least 30 days and I'll be trying to daily drive it for all the tasks that I use my computer for such as programming, gaming, graphics design and of course video editing which is probably going to be the most challenging part. So without further ado, let's get started. Started.
The first thing you have to do when getting started with Linux is to decide which distribution to install. You've probably already heard of Ubuntu, which is the most popular distro, and it's also pretty polished and decent, but personally, I prefer Linux Mint, which by default comes with a desktop environment that's similar to Windows. However, this time, I think I'm going to try out Pop OS instead, because I've heard a lot of good things about it, especially when it comes to having pre-installed graphics drivers, and it also should be pretty easy to install the software that I personally need to use. They even listed DaVinci Resolve on their homepage for media production, so I'm hoping that they've at least tested and verified that it's installable without too big of a hassle, because I've done some research on it, and Resolve on Linux is officially only supported on CentOS, which is basically a distro meant for corporations that nobody would actually daily drive on their home machines, and apparently it's also kind of dead or something. Also, from what I've heard, the experience of using DaVinci Resolve on Linux will be nowhere near as smooth as using it on Windows or Mac OS, which is pretty concerning, but hopefully it will be at least somewhat usable on Pop OS, even though I'm kinda assuming that they just listed it on their website because Resolve is quote-unquote Linux compatible. So having decided which distribution I'm going to be using, all I have to do now is just download it, put it on a memory stick, disconnect my Windows drive and start the installation. As a pretty bad omen, for some reason I got an error already during the installation, but luckily when I chose a different boot option with an identical name, I was able to finally install it and I was now successfully running Pop OS. The first thing I did with my new operating system was check out the application store, which was pretty nice I suppose, and sure enough I was able to install OBS without big issues. With OBS installed, it was time to fix the mouse sensitivity and turn off acceleration, and I kinda wish the slider had some numerical indicator of what speed value you're on, but I'm sure you can set it up from the terminal as well, if necessary. Then I wanted to make sure that my GPU drivers were installed, and just as promised, they were, so it was time to set up a list of challenges to myself that I would like to try on Linux. So the first challenge was to customize my desktop environment to my liking. This is one of the fun parts of Linux where you can customize pretty much whatever you want. For example, I personally don't really like this top bar and for my workflow I prefer the dock to be more like the taskbar from Windows. The next challenge is to install programs I need to use, either the ones that I already used on Windows or alternatives that are available on Linux. After that I wanna try out gaming on Linux which is something I've never done. So I challenged myself to install at least 5 games games that I'd actually like to play. Another thing that seems challenging on Linux is typing Japanese, which is something I need to do, so I'll try to get that working as well. I occasionally also need to do some programming, and I don't think that will be too much of an issue here, but what will definitely be challenging is making a fully fledged video entirely in Linux, and for that I'll have to get DaVinci Resolve working, and just in case, I'm also interested in trying some open source video editor. So with all that out the way, it was time to get started with customization. My main goal was to get a Windows style taskbar and start menu which I eventually succeeded with and I also messed around with the fonts for a while because one of the biggest issues I've had with Linux is that I find the fonts to be rather blurry, especially in specific applications. And even though I didn't get them looking perfect, in the end I was relatively satisfied with the outcome. After that, I wanted to try some gaming, so I installed Steam, and as the first game, I wanted to try CSS, which comes out was natively ported to Linux in 2013. And sure enough, it launched without any problems and it really felt no different from running it on Windows. I was a bit worried that maybe it will have performance issues or that the aim input will somehow be inferior, but despite not having played FPS games for a really long time, I really didn't experience any technical issues regarding game at all. And then I wanted to play some Noita, which is not supported on Linux, but when I enabled Proton, it became installable, and while it did take a bit of time before it launched after hitting play, the game started without any issues and even my last position was saved from when I made the immersion video. I did notice a few mild lag spikes, but I'm not really sure if those are exclusive to Linux, and I didn't really feel like they obstructed the gameplay, so I'd say that it ran perfectly fine. After that, I tried installing OSRS through Proton as well, and as expected, everything worked perfectly fine. But surprisingly, every time I clicked on this new feature, I got disconnected for a moment, and I'm once again not sure whether or not this is a Linux issue, and OSRS is also playable.
playable on Linux through RuneLint anyway if it turns out to be an actual problem. I also tried another game called Gunfire Reborn, which I expected to have the most problems, but turns out it has a gold rating on ProtonDB, aka it quote unquote runs perfectly after tweaks, but I started it up, played a multiplayer co-op game that ended up being over 2 hours long, and despite my unstable internet, alt tabbing and AFKing, I literally experienced zero issues and the game ran completely smooth. And as a slight spoiler, ironically, gaming on Linux, at least to the extent I did it, was the only area where I so far had pretty much no issues at all. Because now I want to talk about the biggest issue by far that I ran into on Linux, and it was also the biggest fear I had before I even got started, which was that every time I use Linux, the desktop experience is incredibly laggy. For example, when I drag Windows around, you can see that it's not smooth, it's stuttering and it's lagging behind the cursor. Resizing windows is also really buggy and laggy and things like this really bother me because I notice every single lag spike and stutter. This might not bother everyone, especially people that are used to it because they use low-end hardware with 60Hz screens, but I personally use a 165Hz screen and I find it really unpleasant when my PC setup that costs over 8000 euros feels like an underpowered laptop. It's not that it just looks ugly, but it also makes doing work on the computer feel nauseating, distracting and it slows me down, and it makes using the PC for long sessions at a time rather uncomfortable because it's fatiguing. Occasionally it even got to the point where my computer was literally unusable because just moving a window freezes everything for over 20 seconds. Okay, so look at this, I'm going- oh, I can't- I can't even touch the window. I can't drag it anymore. I can't, I literally can't drag- oh, what, 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 what is that? I had this problem from the moment I installed Pop OS, and I also experienced similar issues a long time ago on Linux Mint with both the Cinnamon and XFCE desktop environments. Even the first time I installed Linux on my own machine in something like 2017 when I installed Ubuntu and later Mint on my laptop, it clearly didn't feel as smooth as Windows. Also, this is not exactly related, but for some reason I had this issue in both native applications and in the browser where pop-up menus kept closing the moment I opened them so I couldn't even turn on the dark theme or check notifications on YouTube. I eventually installed the KDE desktop environment instead where the pop-up issue was gone and the desktop definitely felt a bit smoother, however it was obvious that everything on the desktop except for the cursor was still stuck in 60Hz despite me having a 100 65Hz monitor. And I found out that when I turn off the second monitor, everything does become close to 165Hz, but then obviously I can't use my second monitor, so it's not really a solution. And after more research, it comes out that this lagginess is really common in Linux even on really high-end computers, especially when you have multiple monitors with different refresh rates. One of the reasons for this seems to be that the X11 display server that Linux uses doesn't work very well with the Nvidia Linux drivers because apparently they both suck or something, and one of the workarounds is just to use this thing called Wayland instead of X11, which is basically the same thing except more modern, but Wayland is still being worked on and apparently it also doesn't work too well with Nvidia cards. One of the other options you have is just to get an AMD card, but because I need Nvidia for Deep Learning and DaVinci Resolve, neither of which are properly supported on AMD, especially on Linux, it's not really a choice either. I did try to get Wayland working on Pop OS, but my first attempts just didn't work for some reason. But all the lagginess aside, as a change of pace I wanted to try out some video editing and I decided to first try out Gaiden Live, which is a video editor slightly similar to Sony Vegas and it's regarded as probably the best open source video editor out there. But right from the first moment I started using it, I ran into issues such as the audio being buggy during playback. This is an example clip for testing Gaiden Live. This is an example clip for Gaiden. Yeah, it's not good. So honestly, I just lost all motivation and interest towards Gaiden Live because making a video is already a battle with all the issues that video editing programs have and I just don't want it to get any worse than it already is. So instead, I finally tried installing DaVinci Resolve and despite running into a few issues, eventually I succeeded, which I was really happy about. But unfortunately, since I didn't have the paid version of Resolve, I still couldn't really use it because the free version does not have H.264 support on Linux, making it basically unusable for me, so I decided that I'll just wait until I get the paid version. Anyway, eventually I got sick of how laggy Pop OS was and heard that Ubuntu apparently has Wayland support right out of the box even for Nvidia cards, so I decided that I'm just going to hard reset everything I've done so far and just try out Ubuntu instead. I had no issues with installing it and once it finished I was honestly kind of blown away. I haven't used Ubuntu for a long time and it has become really polished and beautiful compared to the last time I used it. The only annoying thing is that 
they still don't have a way to turn off mouse acceleration from the settings and also the infamous Ubuntu snap packages that everyone keeps complaining about truly do take much longer to start up, making the computer feel slower than it should. The desktop experience was definitely a lot smoother compared to Pop! OS, but a lot of it still felt like 60Hz and sure enough, came out it was still using X11 instead of Wayland for some reason. But luckily this time, I actually got Wayland working pretty easily and when I opened up OBS, for some reason it was even laggier than before. But this is probably some issue related to OBS because when I closed it, suddenly the desktop was really smooth and I was really happy about it. Even when I was playing a video, resizing and moving the windows still felt smooth and I was really happy that using Linux finally felt like I'm using a real operating system on my actual hardware instead of feeling like I'm running a virtual machine on an underpowered laptop. This also meant that Linux finally started becoming a viable daily driver because honestly, the lagginess I had before was unacceptable so it was a complete deal breaker. But now, all I have to do is see if I can do actual work on it so I could settle and daily drive it. But there is another concern I have, which is that I often keep running into other issues. For example, as I was having fun with my new 165Hz Wayland experience, when I restarted my computer, suddenly everything was stuck on my second monitor on low resolution and changing display settings did absolutely nothing. I checked through the terminal that suddenly my Nvidia drivers were no longer working, so I just assumed that somehow they uninstalled themselves when I ran apt upgrade or something, but from the driver menu it showed that I still have the 510 drivers installed. Luckily reinstalling the drivers fixed it, but the whole ordeal just really made no sense and it was quite a waste of time and energy, especially because it happened exactly when I really wanted to get some work done. Also, before, on Pop! OS, I had this issue where sometimes when I went AFK, later my computer just wouldn't come out of sleep and one time my computer just completely froze for whatever reason. And the actual reason it's concerning is because I'm not really surprised over any of these things. I've always had this kind of an experience on Linux, which if you're familiar with, it's no secret that that's just how things quite often are on the Linux desktop. If you're not familiar with Linux though, then it might have came as a surprise to you, because while people within the Linux community talk and joke about issues with Linux all the time, when it comes to talking about Linux to people outside the Linux community, it's kinda the boo to say anything negative because people want Linux to sound as cool and amazing as possible and especially that it's better than Windows in every imaginable way. And it's no surprise considering that for a lot of people, using Linux isn't a means to an end to play games or get work done, but it's also a hobby, a fandom, and Linux is also heavily tied to the philosophy and social movement of free and open source software, and unfortunately Linux on the desktop is still a minority, so it's pretty easy to see why a lot of people tie their personal identity with Linux and feel attacked whenever it gets criticized. Unfortunately, this also leads to overpromising and quote-unquote false advertising, which is actually pretty sad because it creates false expectations in people trying out Linux for the first time and taboos surrounding problems with Linux within the Linux community, which can slow down the improvement and therefore also the adoption of Linux. So while Linux itself as an operating system is stable and amazing, which is also why it's so great for servers, when it comes to the desktop experience, it obviously has some problems. I mean, if it didn't, it wouldn't even be such a wide discussion, and I wouldn't even have to mention it if criticizing the Linux desktop in front of a non-Linux audience wouldn't be such a taboo. So my concern is that if I decide to daily drive Linux, I'll be spending a lot of time just trying to fix issues that I otherwise would never have to deal with, and I'm not sure if Linux also makes the most of my hardware on applications like DaVinci Resolve. However, let's not forget that Linux is free, and I don't mean free like how Windows is free if you download it and run an activation script from GitHub, but in the sense that it's not only free of cost, but it's also open source and 100% user focused. It's not a product designed to sell, but instead it's a tool born from one of the biggest community driven collaborative efforts in existence. Of course, companies and corporations also use and contribute to Linux, which is fine as well, but regardless of that, it will always stay in the hands of the community because when something happens, there is always another distribution. It's actually mind-blowing and amazing to think that Linux even exists because I can easily imagine a world where it doesn't. The fact that I'm able to do nearly everything on Linux, including running DaVinci Resolve and even games, is absolutely crazy. If that wouldn't be the case, I wouldn't have a choice but to use Windows or Mac OS, which are both great operating systems as 
as well, but I also really appreciate having a safe fallback option that's not controlled by a duopoly that might one day get even less user friendly in order to maintain exponential growth for shareholders. So while the journey is far from over as I still have many problems to solve, I still haven't tried typing Japanese and I've yet to make a fully fledged video with DaVinci Resolve entirely on Linux, I decided that I'll conclude the video here. There might be a part 2 update video, but in case there isn't, to answer the question about whether or not I'm going to be daily driving Linux, I really don't know. I'll still be playing around in Linux after this video to fulfill the challenges and see how it goes. It's a bit hard to imagine that I'd be using Linux 100% of the time, especially over the long term, because it's currently not possible without sacrifices, including having to spend more time on the computer to get the same amount of work done, or at least that's what I assume right now. Even if I do end up back on Windows in the end, I'm glad to know that Linux is an option I have, and considering how much Linux has improved since the last time I used it, I mean, I remember not even being able to change refresh rate from the settings, I'm positive that perhaps some years from now, the Linux desktop experience will be completely different.